Luxury real estate broker Aaron Kerman just landed another monster listing out in Bel Air, California. This one is sitting behind a gate at the top of the hill and it will go down in history if it sells anywhere near his asking price, which is $150 million. Anytime another one of these crazy mega mansions hits the market, they usually make for a pretty fascinating story. But on top of the insane finishes, the five-star amenities, and the world-class team that pulled this project off, What's even crazier is that the current owner just bought this house a little over two years ago for $60 million. So their asking price is almost $100 million more than they paid for this luxurious mega mansion. In today's episode, we are going to talk about who owns this impressive property, why they think it's worth $150 million. And then of course, we're gonna take a look at the listing together and go through all of the amazing photos and features. Okay, so I know everybody's probably dying to see the house. So let's pull up the Zillow listing first together and just flip through all the photos and specs. As far as the exact location of this place though, the mansion is located at 10721 Stradea Court in Bel Air, California. It's sitting in this pocket north of Sunset Boulevard in the Bel Air Country Club. And for anybody who follows the Bel Air luxury real estate scene, the house is right around the corner from the Sarbonne property that was just auctioned off and the one property that sold earlier this year for $141 million. Anyways, hopping over to Zillow, you can see at the top here, the house is listed for $150 million. It's got nine bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, and about 21,000 square feet. The description down here says that the house is sitting in the world's most prestigious location. It calls this listing a once in a generation offering. Then of course it goes on to talk about the 360 degree views, the architecture, the top of the line finishes and appliances, and then other features that the house has like the infinity pool, the outdoor cabanas, the detached guest house, and then that the house has three separate staff quarters. So if we move over to some of the photos here, this one is definitely one of my favorite perspectives of the house. I'm not surprised they use this as their cover shot. You can see the house in the background with that huge light fixture there over the dining room table and off the kitchen. You can see there's a sunken fire pit here in the yard. Next shot shows those views you have right off the swimming pool. It looks like that's probably downtown LA just straight ahead, which is awesome. Here's the entry of the house. It's got that board form concrete wall and then uh, brings you kind of around the corner to a garage. That looks like kind of a tight fit for a car, but whatever, it's a pretty cool look. Moving on to a shot of the front door. Here's another one of those pivot doors those things are super popular I've done a few of them in my projects actually and I think they look great they're pretty functional they seem like they would be really heavy but they're not all that bad because they're on the pivot here's a shot of the dining room I read in the listing that these slats actually will fold shut which gives you a little bit more privacy if you're hosting a dinner party next up here we have this shot of the kitchen so this is something I'm seeing more often in these luxury listings nowadays it's a pretty subtle detail but I actually really like it so You've got the countertop here on the island. You've got the countertop here in the back that's around the stove. And then the same countertop material is used for the backsplash. People have been doing that for a while. But then they kind of frame in this whole section with countertop on the left, the right, and then the upper section here too. I don't know, I like it, it's pretty slick. Up the stairway, you'll see they were really good about their lighting throughout this house. So there's these tiny little lights that kind of line the left side of the stairwell. And then the handrail is actually also recessed with some lighting in there. That's probably like some LED strip lighting. Really nice look. Next, we've got the master bedroom, also with some really nice lighting detail. And then this bedroom is sitting on the second story, it looks like, so you've got even better views than you did down at the pool. Not sure what this room is. I'm pretty sure this is just like an entire room dedicated to lounging and doing your makeup in the morning. And then after that, of course, is a massive closet. This closet is bigger than my bedroom. Bathroom is really slick with just these masses of marble on the walls and on the floors and on the countertop and then that mirror that just kind of runs the length of the countertop. Over here on the other side of the master bath, they have this wooden bathtub that's sitting on kind of like a bed of pebbles and then looking out to the view. They start to round the listing out first with this little massage room. So if you're spending 150 million bucks on a house, then you probably don't want to go down to your local masseuse. So you just have them come to you. 
There's of course a gym, which is also looking out to the view. Then for the final shot, they bring us out here kind of into the view and looking back at the house. This actually looks like an older rendering of the house. It's hard telling, but this is just a really cool perspective of the house and just goes to show what a drone does for you to showcase kind of how cool the architecture is and how all the spaces integrate together. According to the listing, this house is being advertised with a 2% commission that goes to the buyer's broker, which probably means that the listing agent, Aaron Kerman, will also receive a 2% commission when the house sells. 2% of $150 million means that each agent will be receiving a $3 million commission. So it's probably safe to say that Aaron Kerman is doing a pretty heavy amount of marketing when it comes to trying to sell this house. First, when you look at his Instagram, there's of course a handful of posts here that have gone out to his 376,000 Instagram followers. One of the posts is just simply announcing the new listing. Another one of the posts has a short video describing the listing as truly the pinnacle of luxury. And then his latest post on here shows what the staging looks like in the master bedroom, which is actually pretty funny. The master bedroom is so huge that it makes the bed look pretty tiny. It's pretty crazy that in this day and age, a real estate agent like Aaron Kerman having a huge Instagram following is actually a great marketing tool when he's trying to sell a house. I mean, most of Aaron Kerman's followers are private, so we can't see all of the people who follow him, but it's basically guaranteed that some of these 376,000 people are billionaires who can actually afford this house. So blasting the house out on Instagram isn't a bad strategy when you're somebody like Aaron. Anyways, other than Instagram, I wasn't able to dig up any press or any major news publications other than an article that Forbes did about a week back. Aaron did publish a four minute video on his YouTube channel though, which has some pretty cool drone footage of the house and it shows the property in motion, which is kind of nice. But to be honest, the video doesn't really show you much more than the photos on Zillow do. My opinion is that a proper video of this house and a great tool for marketing would be if somebody like the YouTuber Enes went out there to do a detailed house tour and then posted that to his YouTube channel. That would just really help to showcase the entire house and all of its intricate details. The owner of this Stradea property property is a guy who's known as the Coupon King. His name is George Ruan. If you've never heard of him before, George is the CEO and co-founder of the company Honey, which is basically a discount code browser extension for buying stuff online. Honey was originally founded in October of 2012. It ended up being super successful. George sold the company to PayPal in 2020 for $4 billion, which was mostly cash and was said to be one of the largest tech acquisitions in history. Obviously, not all of that money went to George, but following the acquisition from PayPal, his net worth skyrocketed to around $1.5 billion. So him buying this property for 60 million bucks shortly after was really just a drop in the bucket. The home was actually still in construction at the time that he bought it, and George George went on to complete the construction with a bunch of personal customizations. It's hard telling exactly how much money George sunk into this house after he bought it, but the house was already pretty far along in the build process. So my guess is that after he bought it, he probably spent around 10 or 15 million bucks to finish the place. The team who made this house a reality started with a company called Viewpoint Collection, who is a luxury real estate developer out of Los Angeles. Viewpoint partnered with a company called The Builders Team to help build out the house and another company called Plus Development, who's a real estate development management firm also based out of LA. The architect responsible for the building and the floor plan was world-renowned architectural firm Sayota, who I'm sure most of you guys have heard of. This group has a global footprint and are responsible for designing some of the most unique and innovative properties around. And last, the local firm Woods and Dangeron was brought in to assist Sayota with the architecture and selection of finishes. From what I read, it was the new buyer, George, who decided to bring them onto the project. Start to finish, this place took around five years from the original acquisition to build it out into what it is today. So if you're looking to build a massive mega mansion out in LA, you definitely need to be patient. The build process can be a slow moving nightmare, especially if you're building hillside like they were on this Stradea lot. If I look at the comps for this place, it's really hard to justify a $150 million sale to be honest. I mean, this Zillow shot shows everything that sold in 90077 recently. And here, just to show you guys, I selected a filter to only show homes that were built 2018 or later. That way it shows us the newer construction properties. Oddly enough, one of the most expensive homes that has sold around here in the past 
past couple of years is the exact property that we're talking about, which is when George bought it for 60 million bucks. And then of course, not far away is the one which just sold a few months back for $141 million. Then the next highest price in the area is 777 Sarbone, which just sold for under $46 million about six weeks back. I know a lot of you guys out there hate on the one project because of all the controversy that surrounds it, but let's be real, that house is actually a really strong comp for this new listing of Aaron Kerman's. I mean, it just sold, it is new construction, and it's located right within the same neighborhood. But the issue is the one selling at $141 million means that it sold for about $1,350 per square foot just because it's so big at 105,000 square feet. Best of luck to Aaron Kerman, but that's not a great look for his new listing. Remember I said at the start of the video, he's asking $7,000 a square foot for this one. If you enjoyed the episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below or leave a comment. That really helps the channel out a lot. And remember to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'm putting new videos just like this one out every week, but that's all I've got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!